In this video, you'll learn about the parts of the Windows 8 interface. After you pass the login screen, you're greeted by the new Start screen, a program launcher that replaces the Windows Start menu. The icons you see here, called Tiles, represent Windows 8 built-in programs and others that you've installed. To launch a program, you locate its tile and click it. You'll note that some of the built-in programs, such as Weather and News, can be represented by live tiles that continually update to display the latest information. To show how these mini programs work, let's launch Finance. It downloads and then displays the latest financial data. If there are additional screens to view in an app, you can move the cursor to the bottom of the screen and drag the horizontal scroll bar. When you're done using one of these apps, you can optionally quit it by moving the cursor to the top of the screen and then clicking and dragging the app off the bottom of the screen. Note that you don't have to quit any of these apps. Windows 8 manages memory and will automatically quit uh, built-in apps as necessary. To return to the Start screen, you can press the Windows key, click the Start icon in the Charms bar, or move the cursor to the lower left corner of the screen and click the Start icon. As you'll learn in later videos, you can customize the Start screen by displaying tiles for only the programs you want, rearranging and resizing tiles, creating tile groups, and adding tiles for your favorite websites and contacts. Windows 8 also introduces the just mentioned Charms Bar, a pop-out panel. You can reveal it by pressing Windows C or by moving the cursor to the upper right or lower right corner of the screen. You can then click the Charms Bar icons to perform searches for apps, files, and settings, share material with friends and social networking sites, switch between the desktop and start screen, manage connected devices, and access settings such as control panels, preferences for the built-in apps, and the shutdown and restart commands. The Charms Bar is available on the start screen, the desktop, and when running any of the new Windows start screen apps. Another new Windows component is the Apps Bar. If you right-click an empty area of the Start screen, the Apps Bar appears. You can click All Apps to display every application that's installed on the computer. If you right-click a tile, on the other hand, the Apps Bar presents commands related to the selected application. You can remove it from the Start screen, uninstall it, pin it to the Task Bar, and so on. The Windows Desktop is still where you run most of your applications. To reach it from the Start screen, you can click the Desktop tile or press Windows D. The only immediate difference you'll notice from previous versions is that the Start button is now gone. As you can see, you can still adorn the desktop with widgets and folder, document, and application shortcuts. And the Recycle Bin is still the repository for deleted files. The Taskbar remains at the bottom of the screen. Its left side holds shortcuts to your favorite applications, formerly referred to as Quick Launch icons. Next are any icons for currently running programs, open folders, and system software. You can preview any of these by resting the cursor on its taskbar icon, and then moving the cursor into the preview. The right side of the taskbar, formerly known as a system tray, is now called the notification area, and it works the same as it always has. You can return to the start screen at any time by pressing the Windows key or by moving the cursor to the lower left corner of the screen and clicking the start icon when it pops up. The final new interface component is the lock screen. It serves the same purpose as a mobile phone's lock screen. That is, it provides privacy when you're away from your computer. To activate the lock screen from either the desktop or the start screen, simply press Windows L 